Or is it something more profound? Please welcome Bailey Hogan. important part of my life. Uh, I started to learn violin at the age of six and performed at various functions and events throughout my youth. Um, when I was 17 I moved from Limerick to Cork to study music in UCC. I wasn't a great music student, to be honest. Sorry, mummy. Um, I was far more interested in attending local gigs than in my formal studies. And through the local music scene, I fell in love with Cork City. Uh, skipping ahead a few years, after returning to college to study social science, I was lucky enough to be offered a job as an assistant lecturer in UCC. So the, most tradi the more traditional route into academia is to do a PhD first and then get a job in university. But I did things backwards, or so as my dad would say. Um, and once I was offered a, a permanent contract, um, I was put under pressure to do a PhD and I thought long and hard about potential research topics. Um, Cork City's music scene continued to fascinate me, so I began to look at literature around music scenes and local identity. And in my research I stumbled upon a beautiful phrase written by a woman who would become my doctoral supervisor, Sarah Cohen was her name. And writing about her experience of Liverpool's music scene, she used the words music and the sensuous production of place. And these words really resonated with my experiences of Cork and my feelings about Cork. And these feelings are always intertwined with my enjoyment of local music. Corkonians' deep sense of pride in their city is well known. Speaking to the converted here, I'm sure. Um, and I was intrigued about how this strong sense of place manifests in the motivations and the ambitions and the lived experiences of local music makers. So how does it shape social relationships? and friendships and collaborations within the music scene? And how does music making shape the city itself? And how is this relevant to bigger questions about quality of life and human well-being and cultural value and citizenship? Now, most times um, when I'm asked to describe my doctoral research topic, the typical response is an arched eyebrow. And one, you can do a PhD on that. <laughs> <laughs> Two, oh yeah, research. <laughs> and three, so like, it's just an excuse to go out every night. <laughs> and I chuck it along. Oh, that's gas. Good one. Never heard that before. A bit like my reaction when people sing, come on, I mean at me. <laughs> and <laughs> inside, I'm screaming, you fools. <laughs> Can't you see how important music is? Music is being. Music is life. Music is everything. Interestingly, these type of reactions never came from people that were involved in the local music scene and the worthiness of music as a research topic, the meaningfulness of their own music-making practices did not require affirmation. So, part of my research involved going out to gigs and events, to battle the band competitions and album launches, open mic nights, etc. Observing what was going on and chatting with people. And it was great fun. And it was a brilliant excuse to go out every night. <laughs> The other part of my research involved interviewing local music makers. So I use that term music makers in a very broad and holistic sense. So I included people involved in all aspects of the local music industries. Musicians, promoters, venue owners, journalists, radio DJs, bloggers, producers, record label owners, independent record store employees, anyone who was connected to the production and distribution of original local music in a variety of genres. Um, and those people often had multiple roles, so you'd have musician journalists, musician promoters, bloggers, producers, etc, etc. I interviewed 53 people in total over the course of about three years. And I have a list of all the participants there. People tend to be nosy about who I interviewed. <laughs> so I can hand them out to you afterwards if you're interested. So, what did I discover? 
I preface my message first with an acknowledgement that the thesis is a very large document. It's a weighty tome that no one is ever really going to read. Um, and it covers a broad range of issues. So what I'm going to talk about now is just a sliver. Um, importantly, first, um, I should contextualize the timing of the research. So the interviews took place in the post-recession period between 2010 and 2013. So on the one hand, the interview data evidenced a sense of frustration about lack of money and lack of opportunity that was associated with the recession. But on the other hand, this lack of money was also perceived to re-enliven the music scene and to open up new um, and differently imagined opportunities to revalorize the intrinsic value of music making, that is, music making for music's sake. So within the research participants' narratives, it's clear that money and fame remain motivating factors, factors, if not for all, then for many. They don't want to over-romanticize that point. <laughs> However, the economic crisis does seem to have altered perceptions about these more materialist values. Um, sometimes scornful of the fantasy of fame, the participants seem to be expressing a search for authenticity um, as a reaction, really, against the uncertainty and alienation of everyday life in post-crisis Ireland. This quest for authenticity is interconnected with the sense of well-being and is deeply rooted in the local and in Cork. The research participants expressed a deep sense of belonging within what they described over and over again as a community of music makers, evidencing strong attachment to Cork, to Corkonians. Um, music producers' sense of commitment to each other, to music making, to the city, seem to present a sort of a defense against feelings of rootlessness and social isolation that are the typical outcomes of living in what is purported to be um, an increasingly individualistic and selfish society. My point is that Cork is much more than a backdrop for local music makers. This is a compact music scene and it's swaddled in the close urban fabric of a small city, which enables the generation of tightly knit socio-musical collectives. Music makers throughout their narrative celebrate collaboration and reciprocity and mutual support and a sense of solidarity. And they see this as central to the perceived special qualities of the local music scene. Music makers' mindset is parochial. And I don't mean that in the pejorative sense of being small-minded or being insular. Rather, I mean it in the older but more progressive sense of the term where parochial parochialism actually refers to care for one's parish. Mm -hmm. So music makers celebrate and they cherish those who contribute to the making of the parish, the city. Respect is shown to those who demonstrate an authentic commitment to music making for music's sake, music making for the community, and music making for the city. Local heroes are valued not only for their music making capabilities, but much more importantly, for their roles in promoting the local music scene, thereby contributing to the individual and collective well-being of the city's inhabitants. Newcomers to the local scene are also expected to ascribe to these same values. What motivates music makers then is the experience of giving, their gifts of music, of favours. These are sensual gifts, a sense of community, a sense of belonging, a sense of citizenship. And this shapes the city itself, impacting not only on the well-being of present inhabitants, but also those of future generations. In conclusion, my point is not merely that Cork makes music because Cork loves music, but rather that music makes Cork. Oh. <laughs>